Hey guys, it's Derek here. Today we have our very first haul of 2022, and it's gonna be a good one. Let's get into it. Starting off with our Hobby Link Japan package. Now, this one here only cost me $13 Canadian for shipping, and it wasn't DHL, so I didn't get dinged as well. The figure itself is rather small, so you probably could have guessed it. It is a Nendoroid. Well, they really didn't pack it with very much. <laughs> oh, that's different. Okay, that's not so bad. This is the Eris, er, Eris from Mushoku Tensei. Now I picked this one up off of Hobby Long Japan for about $57 Canadian, which wasn't very much. Now I originally could have pre-ordered off of pretty much anywhere else, but I wasn't really feeling her character. And she ended up warming up to me in the, I guess the second, second season, second part of the first season, whatever you guys want to call it. Got a little instruction sheet. Don't think we'll need that. She does look really cute though. I'll give her that. Now I'm not really into Cinderace typically, but she's too cute to pass up. Little Ahoge in the very top. Of course you get her triple face setup, like pretty much every single Nendoroid. Her little belt that she has on does actually move around a little bit. So that's kind of interesting, but kind of your typical Nendoroid setup with her legs and also her arms, nothing too, too special. But I do think that the two pieces of her hair in the very front might be a bit of an issue when it comes to posing. I don't think too many dynamic poses can be achieved because of that. Like any other Cinderay out there, you do get some parts to put her in a very pouty crossed arm pose, which is really cute. And you do get a bent leg. So you can kind of simulate running forward a little bit. She can actually reach for her little dagger, so that's kind of cool. I think the best part about this entire figure is this faceplate over here. I guess this is faceplate number three. It's her embarrassed blushing face. Moving on to package number two. I think I'm gonna save this one for last. <laughs> this is something actually a little more special and kind of valuable, so I'm gonna save that for a little last. But we'll open up this giant Ami Ami box instead. Now, this one here, I actually combined shipping with Kyle, uh, because, you know, that guy always needs his Nendoroid fix. So I got a few Nendoroids in here, and this package itself cost quite a bit to get it shipped over here. About $120 Canadian, and another $77 for customs. Oh, it's a postcard this time, not a, not a comic. Off to the side. Whew. All right. Let's see what we got. Don't know if you can see that. Don't look at that one. Don't look at that one. <laughs> oh, baby. Look at all those Nendoroids. Where do we start? Let's pick out a pair. Number 1602, Jonathan Joestar from Jojo Part 1. And 1624, Dio Brando from Part 1. Now, these two are really cool. The boxes kind of look like they're meant to be together. They have a nice embossed look on them too. Dio has his like rose all over the side with a checkered pattern or a diamond pattern. And you have diamonds and stars for Jonathan. That's pretty cool. Let's open these up. I oh, guess we should start with the first Jojo. I don't know how many of you guys actually watched Jojo, but Jojo's kind of fun. Part one was kind of meh. And a lot of people don't have this Jojo, Jonathan, as their favorite. It was very, very vanilla. His hair is kind of loose in the very front, so his arms are fully articulate, so you can move at the elbow and of course at the wrist. And it looks like we do get a bit of movement for his knees as well, although it looks kind of weird because it's a little further down. For accessories, it looks like we do get a sword that says plucked with the bloody pea. Also, you do get to put a backpack on if you want. You also could put a Haman fist. Okay, okay. You know, you got your pointing fingers and a whole bunch of other stuff like that. Not too impressed with Jonathan here. All right, Dio Brando is next. Okay, he looks like he has a ton more accessories and is a much better value from what it looks like. Ooh, look at him. Look at him being so menacing. You do get the stone mask that, you know, I'm not gonna tell you what the stone mask does, but you know, it does a thing to him and then, you know, Jojo stuff happens. Now he feels a lot more subtle than Jonathan did. His outfit's also much more extravagant. You got a lot of gold parts on here that are little accented pieces, and he does feel more solid. His hair, honestly, I don't know where the heck his hair actually separates from. It's like very, very, very well hidden. Oh, there it is. He of course has the same kind of articulation that you'd find from the rest of the Jojo line. But his arms and legs both bend his elbows and knees, so that's nice. You also get a few other accessories though, like his severed head little part. The little dangly bits at the end of part one, you can put that on. Between the two, if I had to choose one to pick up for that price, I'd definitely pick Dio up because he's just cooler. There's nothing really going on with Jonathan. Okay. 
Now there's two more Nandorites that Kyle picked up. Let's see what we got in here. We got, oh, what do we got? Ooh, Tomioka Gyu from Demon Slayer. Now he's one of my favorite Hashida. There's definitely a whole bunch of them, but even though he's really cool and calm and rather, rather collected. Oh, gentle, gentle, gentle. He goes for about 49, 4,900, 4,950 Japanese yen. And oh, he does come with a whole bunch of accessories. Yo, the back piece actually moves to his hair. Now that's neat. You do get a whole bunch of different hands and arms that you can slap on. Some that you can swing with, some that you can have when drawing the sword. I really do like how they added the deco on the side here. It's really nicely done. It's not really blotchy or anything. Really good execution. Solid, solid. You have his little tiny little crow. A little added detail with how his beak is actually a little glossy. There's also, of course, a bent knee section. Like everyone has. You also get a very cute expression where he's like, huh! You get a little effect part for that, so that's cool. The paint on his wave effect part or when he's slashing through is a little blotchy, so paint work is a not the best there. May have been a special or something, but I know you can actually get the 11th form as a little acrylic thing or a little flint, like a little piece of plastic you can put in front. Just kidding, I found it. There you go, there's the piece. Okay, this is a lot bigger than I thought it'd be. <laughs> There's so much tape. In this case, I think it's a really good value then. Look at this. Super well packaged together. This is probably the best little add-on I've actually seen. Manually comes with is also thick. What the heck is this? Moving on to the last ender he has. This is the Nanachi from Made in Abyss. Now this one goes for a little over 5,000 yen. But it seems like there's enough accessories in here to kind of justify that. There has to be a better way to open these things up. Woo, it's kind of weighty. Okay, that's why it costs this much. I forgot that she actually has a really big back piece for her hair or... I don't know what you want to call it. Oh, she heavy. Give me a second. I think this might actually be one of the more detailed Nendoroids I've actually taken a look at. There's a lot going on and she looks super cute. Just the entire headpiece is just like super solid. Tail's also articulating and her little feet are also movable too. Oh, kind of curious. Are you, have you guys actually watched Made in Abyss yourselves? That series is uh, sneakily good. Oh, looks Looks like we get a spare Mitty. Mitty? Mitty to go along with her. Also, a little bit of food that I think you can kind of feed her. Maybe feed herself. Her food's not really that edible. Oh! And you also get two extra spare faces that are hidden in the back. A blushing face and a little crying satisfied after eating face. Okay, so let's all do this together. You need to take off the ears and then remove the headpiece or the hat hair thing. Oh, that's cool. I've never seen a Nendoroid be constructed like this. Like you literally have to take it apart in a very specific manner. So that is pretty cool. Yeah, if the rest of the Made in Abyss stuff, it looks like this, then definite win. This is really cute. We got one more Nendoroid in here, but this one's actually mine. This one I actually waited for. Actually, I contemplated whether or not getting it. This is the Maple from Bufuri, or I didn't want to get hurt, so I'll max out my defense or whatever that gets called. Really cute anime, and I really am excited to pick or open this one up. Now, she was a little bit more on the expensive side because she has a ton of different accessories. So she's about 55,040 yen, if I remember correctly. Now, this is the first Nendoroid today that comes in her own little baggie. Cute little ahoge on the very top. Her default expression is a smiling expression, so that's good. And it doesn't look like her, her armored skirt moves at all. Now, instead of these normal legs, you can also have a set of kneeling down legs. That's actually super important because you actually want her to go down to that level to pick up this little guy. This is Syrup the Turtle. Super cute. You do, of course, get her massive shield. Yeah, there's only one piece, a little bit menacing. I guess you can put this directly behind her. And she does also have her dagger and, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually quite impressed by how she turned out. The armor looks really spot on with the paint apps and same with pretty much all the other pieces on her too. The last thing we have here is this beautiful rem, this reindeer rem. Now I waited a long time for this one, this is another Katie Cole one. Oh, she looks really, really nice. The paint looks really good on her and she looks great from just the front window. Like I'm going to have to do a whole separate video for her to really break it down. Like the 
random connoisseur that I am, but this is really, really cool. I think this would be really cool to put next to all my choppers who are also reindeer. Now it's time for the final thing in this haul. And the reason why I saved this for last is because it's technically the most expensive. Something this small costs more than maybe everything else combined. Now this thing I got off of eBay. Now I typically don't buy it off of eBay just because it's pretty hit or miss. Looks like it's very well packaged. Pick this up for about $500, where $500 Canadian that is. And shipping was about 70, so shipping was $70. No way. Shipping was free and DHL was $70. It was like last month. I don't remember anymore. But this is a watch, believe it or not. And that's why I'm not wearing one right now. So we can try it on together. Now, One Piece recently had their thousandth episode release. And this is to commemorate that. This is a thousand logs watch that they did with Seiko, which is pretty limited. There's only 5,000 of these in the world. And if I didn't get duped or, or scammed, this should be number 1244. This was technically opened and used as a storefront model. Oof, look at that. That nice thousand logs kind of embossed on there, nice and gold. Oof, and there's the watch. It's not the nicest watch out there. It is a quartz watch. It is 1244. Now, if you just look at the dial, there's like a nice ombre or kind of gradient going from teal to dark blue in the very top. And there's gold everywhere else. Like it just, it, it, it is really, really nice. But it looks like the case finishing, you know, it's okay. It's not the best in the world. It does only come with a metal band. And let's see if it fits. It's really, really scratchy. I don't really like metal bands. Oh, look at that. It's not that big either. It says the case size is only supposed to be 46 millimeter, but it looks a little bit smaller than that. If you can't tell, I'm really excited to have this watch. It is a little bit expensive for what it is, but no, I, I do like it though. I'm gonna wear it a whole bunch, at least for the next week or so <laughs> until I get the, uh, the other band on. There we go. First haul of 2022 is in the books. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, please consider giving this a like and if you guys want to see, I guess, the Lacus video, I'll leave it over there. My name is Derek, and I will see you at the next one. Bye-bye.